good. All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome. My name is Monty Taylor, and I'm going to be talking about using O Profile for fun and profit, or just using it to look at stuff, or just using it because you want to, or something else. Um, so uh, the first question, really, uh, if you're going to start talking about O Profile, is answering the reasonably simple question: What is O Profile? Um, and the answer to that is that it is a yeah, it is a kernel-based profiler. Um, it's available in Linux 2.2 uh, and up. Um, so you can't use it on OS 10. Can't use it on Solaris. Sorry, uh, can't use it on. But you know, you Solaris and OS 10 people have D-Trace, so you know. Get over it. Um, it's uh, it, it, it works a little bit differently in that it actually is it uh, at one of the components of it is a loaded kernel module. So when you start the when you start the whole process up, it loads something in and then it actually uh, samples what the kernel is doing uh, at any given point in time and then makes you um, well really large files in places that contain all of that and then you can run reports on the data of that. Luckily, you don't have to write those reports in off yourself um, because that would sort of blow. Um, but uh, so it's it's useful in that it, it will at least spit some stuff out. Um, what it's good for, uh, and this is this is the this is a little tricky bit. I mean, it's we've got lots of performance profiling tools everywhere. Um, one of the nice things about this, it shares with Dtrace, and this isn't uh, specific to a particular application. This isn't like a performance schema or show variables in MySQL or something like that. You can use this to do some profiling of Thunderbird if you wanted to see just exactly why it was making your system so entirely slow. Um, and then you'd probably scream and run away and you know jump off of a building somewhere. Um, but uh, it's, it's sort of low level. So it's not really the first thing you jump for um, when you're like, hey, I'm having a performance problem. Um, if you, imagining that we're dealing with something crazy like, I don't know, a MySQL database, um, you, you want to hit your first things first, like slow query logs or other indicators top. You know, what's running slow in my system? Top. Uh, you know, oh, hey, look, it's Firefox. You know, um, and, then, and then, you know, so you don't necessarily have to immediately jump into kernel level profiling of your system to figure out, you know, Firefox. Um, but, uh, but at times there are, with, with that example in mind uh, of MySQL, there are times, and I'll show a couple of examples of this, um, where the normal tools would never catch the problem in a million years. Um, one of them is a thing where the, the queries themselves were, you know, running a few milliseconds slower than they would have run uh, af than they were otherwise, except there were a lot of queries. So overall, that meant that the CPU utilization was higher than it was being expected to be. But none of the queries were really problematic. They were running in like you know 15 milliseconds or something ridiculous like that. And so unless you wanted to see every query that ever ran through the system, and then you'd still be like, these are still fast. I don't know what the problem is. Anyway, so it's it's for sort of digging into stuff and really figuring out where some problems is. And hopefully that'll that'll become clear. Um, unless I run out of time time because I babble on slide four of 39 for seven minutes. So um, jumping straight into it, uh, the first step before you can use OProfile in any situation is you have to install OProfile. Surprise, surprise. Um, the, the fundamental things that are part of that is installing the OProfile package itself. Um, the bit that may not be immediately apparent, um, because you know you can pretty much always figure out apt-get install OProfile. Um, is that this is gonna this is gonna wanna this is gonna be looking at like you know call stacks and things that, that programs are doing. So it needs the, the debug symbols for those programs that you're interested in so that it can print up something to you that is not just an offset in a file, which wouldn't be very useful for you unless you can really read binary, in which case you probably don't need OProfile because you probably plug the cable straight into your temple. Um, so you want to install debug symbols for the things you're interested in. On Red Hat, these are often uh, blah, 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 dash debug info. Um, I believe. I don't really run Red Hat, but last time I looked it was that. On Debian, um, it's blah 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 dash dbg, uh, which is short for debug, in case anybody didn't catch that. Uh, it's not short for database group. Um, um, another thing that you may want to install, ah, darn it, there's word wrapping. Um, uh, and there's still word wrapping. Well, you know, it's what happens. Hopefully you'll live with the formatting of the slide. Um, 
So another thing that you might want to in, that you might want to install is uh, kernel uh, debug info, um, because some of the things that are happening actually are going to be happening inside of the kernel. Um, and if you don't have the kernel debug symbols installed somewhere on your system, this doesn't mean you have to install a kernel that has new symbols installed into it. It sticks the file somewhere, and that's fine. Um, on Red Hat, this is oddly enough, uh, or Red Hat based systems, this is oddly enough a package called kernel debug info, um, uh, which is sort of nice. Uh, however, if you're running on uh, the various CentOSes or things like that, you may not have the debug info repositories enabled, in which case you might have to use the longer and more awkward command down below of yum enable repo core debug info, enable updates debug info, install kernel debug info. Um, I would have assumed that. Yum would have figured out from asking for a dash debug info file that you might have actually wanted the debug info packages, but whatever. Um, on uh, it's it's a little bit easier on Ubuntu, and I'm extrapolating from that on Debian. Uh, apt get install Linux image debug dash whatever version of the kernel you're installing. If you have built your own kernels from source, uh, the thing that it's going to be looking for is a VM Linux file as opposed to the VM Linux file doesn't really get built by default, so you go into your kernel tree and type make VM Linux, and it will make an uncompressed Linux image, um, because the other one is compressed, and uh, Oprofile can't read it. And it seems that there are actually no utilities out there on the net to take a compressed kernel image and uncompress it. Amazingly enough, you cannot g-unzip it. Um, anyway, so the fail here is that if you happen to be running a recent Ubuntu, um, that meaning uh, Intrepid or Jaunty, um, they haven't bothered uploading the debug info packages for the kernel. So you're just out of luck. I guess you could recompile a kernel from scratch, but you know, whatever. Uh, um, you know, you don't, no, you don't want to mislead people. We've, we've done this over time without kernel debug info, but our binary is in the user space. Have debug symbols and it was pretty useful. They, um, sorry, which thing? So you do not have the kernel with debug symbols. Yeah, yeah, no. Oh, you know, you can't. Yeah, yeah. You can still use a profile. This is just you won't get you won't get symbols from what the kernel is doing. So if the kernel happens to be doing something weird, which in one of the examples that we're going to look at, it will be you're out of luck here. You're not completely out of luck. It is still sort of annoying that the debug info for the kernels isn't there, but um, that's sort of a side issue and just me being snarky. Um, I would like the packages to be there. It would make me happy. Um, so, using no profile, because we really don't need to spend an entire thing on installing software, at least I hope we don't. Um, if you do need a whole session on installing software, then possibly debugging with no profile might be then a couple steps too far. Um, so, by default, um, Oh, that's interesting. I added this slide in, and I think it might be in the wrong order. Anyway, so by default, when we start using no profile, it's going to be tracking um, uh, what it labels as CPU clock unhalted, um, and what that means is that it's 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 tracking what's going on in the CPU um, while things aren't halted, thus clock unhalted. Um, essentially translated to what's going on in in the on the machine. This is most of the time what I use it for. It's 99. I don't know. I'm saying 99 percent because then that's wrong. But um, it's it's pretty darn useful, and it's going to be the examples we're we're going for here. I mention it because. There are tons of other things that you can have O profile track. Um, sort of digging down uh, just uh, a little bit later on today, I'm, I'm hopefully going to be poking at having it tell me when we're having level one cache misses. It'll do that. Uh, I don't know if it'll be useful to me or not, but you know, we'll see. Um, so all of our examples are going to assume that what we are actually tracking is the default, which is CPU clock unhalted. Um, if you want to see what all the various things are that you can track, you can type uh, op control. Uh, dash dash show dash form uh, show dash type dash dash help and uh, and look for something that starts with dash dash show and uh, then run that um, and that'll that'll get you the a reasonably long list of uh, of, of things that you can uh, that you can track against so God blast it these are all gonna suck um, at least give me three seconds here um, yeah, so that's a little bit smaller. And we'll make this a little bit bigger, and we'll get out of that. Ah, screw it. 
All right, so um, again, apologizing for the uh, fact that I can't get my terminal, uh, my screen size to, this is what I get for running Jaunty before it's released at the conference. Um, my fault, really. So, um, so I actually typically keep three, three little shell scripts in my, in my home directory, start pro O profile, stop O profile, and report O profile. Um, you don't have to do that, and you also don't have to keep them in your home directory or even have them as scripts, but essentially their contents would be this. You'd have a start script. Um, the steps that you've got to do is op control init. Uh, what this does essentially is load the kernel module um, and get things set up to go. Um, op control setup tells it what it is that you want it to do. Most of the time that I'm doing this, um, the, the 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 separate thing there is is as it's as it's collecting things, what to what to sort of store in different buckets. So I want I want not just information on what calls is happening in a particular thing, but I would like to know what library they came from. I'd like to know what's going on in, in kernels, uh, in the kernel, and, and in various threading uh, stuff. Um, so that, that winds up being a, there's a couple different things that you can, you can split on. And then later in the report thing, you can combine things. So it's, you know, almost sort of like a database, except not really. Um, and then you can give it either dash dash VM Linux and then give it a path to your uncompressed VM Linux file, or if you don't have one because you're running Intrepid or Jaunty, um, you can do dash dash no VM Linux, and it will not bother looking for an uncompressed VM Linux file, and will just lump all of the kernel stuff together in one line, um, in which case it will show you that 40% of your time is spent in the kernel or something like that, and it's just useless, but um, the rest of it is nice. Um, and then you tell op control to start the, uh, most of these you really need to be root for, um, there are kernel modules involved here, so it's pretty much going to prevent you from uh, doing some of this as a normal user. So sudo is your friend. Um, op control start daemon, amazingly enough, starts the daemon. Um, and then op control start uh, starts, the, starts gathering the statistics of the things that you, uh, it starts gathering statistics of the things that you've asked it to separate out of what's going on. Um, so then once you've been doing that for a while, so then the thing is, is you start that. It's, it's starting to collect. And it's just starting to collect on the system, right? Like your, your whole computer. Um, so depending on whether you need to do some startup phase or whatever, first I do that before you start collecting statistics um, so that you know, you're collecting what you want to collect. And then let something run for a while. This isn't like run a query, a single one, and then, and then do this. This is like run the query a couple thousand times. You know, like run something in a loop. Or you've got load coming in from your web apps or whatever, and it's, it's generating a thing, and you and you do this for, for a little bit, and, you, and then collect some data, um, because there's some statistics going on here, and you want to get a good sample size. Um, then when you're done, um, three different things that sort of correspond to three of the start commands. Uh, you want to do stop, you want to do d init, and you'd like to reset. Uh, individually, these stop collecting things, unload the kernel module, and um, delete the various files, because it's going to be writing the files in var lib somewhere, and so if you just left O profile on, like, like tracking your system, it's like logging everything the kernel's doing into a file, so it's going to grow, you know, uh, and it's, you don't want to just like leave this running for your entire life, um, although you can start it up on a production system if you wanted to, um, like physically you can do that, you don't have to stop MySQL or Postgres or Thunderbird or whatever it is that you're running. Um, so, that's wonderful. How about a simple example um, of where this was useful to me in my past? Um, and this would be so much better if the screen wasn't screwed up. Um, so, we're going to give this one more try. Um, just make it smaller. Can you still read those? Yeah, that's still readable. It's readable to me. It's not readable to you, then you're just out of luck. Hey, look at that! Woo! -hoo. No wrapping. Um, so, what I've done here, this is actually uh, this is actually uh, production data from a client site. I'm not going to tell you which client, because um, honestly, I don't remember. Um, because it was a long time ago. Uh, it wasn't that long ago, but my brain is sort of like sieve. Um, I started a profile using the pretty much the exact start thing that I showed you just a couple slides ago. Uh, and this is on one of their, amazingly enough, they let me do this on a production server. Um, so, uh, because they were having, you know, issues and we couldn't find them any other way. We exhausted the other means to figure out why they were, why they were slow. Um, and there were other problems that they had. But, so we thought we'd take a poke in here and see if anything jumped out at us. Um, 
which is sort of the thing, sort of one of the things about this, especially if you're if you're consistently profiling a particular thing, is is things have sort of normal seeming uh, behavior and places where you're normally going to expect them to be to be hot, and then so some of it is about looking at things more than once and starting to get a feel so that you can sort of make a judgment of, oh, does that look reasonable or not reasonable? Um, so we, we, let, we let this run a little bit and it collected, um, it collected some things. The columns here are, um, you've got number of number of samples that it took uh, of, of, of what was occurring. This is sort of percentage of time spent doing a particular thing. So the thing that we're doing the most on this server uh, in the context of, um, uh, in the context of the, of the execute, you know, did I quickly skip over? Yeah, so I went, I blew right by the slide, I'm very sorry. Um, when it's time to run a report, um, you run op control dump, which forces it to, to sync out what it's got to, to disk so that it can report on it. Um, and then uh, op report is the command, all the rest of these have been op control, but op report is the thing that actually builds reports. Um, and so here I'm telling it to do name and demangle uh, is uh, to be intelligent about demangling C++ names because C++ names in, uh, in simple files uh, are ugly and unreadable. Well, they're not completely unreadable, they're just mangled. Um, but it'll present them so that they look like uh, method signatures. Um, uh, we, want, we want simple information, we would like long file names, although in all honesty I have then edited these and removed most of the paths from the file names because, well, it would have wrapped worse. Um, so there, there has been editing of the reports. And then we're going to merge it on um, on the path to the binary that so um, so when it's doing this, I'm interested mostly in things that were happening inside of um, well in this case my SQLD, but I wrote Drizzled here because I'm a Drizzle developer and I'm like that. Um, so uh, so I did all of that, and you can see that I got um, some stuff going on in my SQLD here. Um, the top amount of stuff that's going on on the on the machine. Is this copy uh, user generic C, um, which doesn't didn't really immediately concern me, um, but from looking at this uh, and knowing s uh, virtually nothing about their application, um, which was sort of part of the problem, um, there is something that jumped out at me um, that seemed like it might have been out of place to be sort of at the top of the list of what their server would be doing, spending its time in the CPU doing. Um, so I'm wondering if anybody managed to spot what I spotted. Get new handler. No. Nope. Get new handler. No. Nope. No. Nope. That wasn't the that wasn't the thing. Well, that wasn't this particular thing. There are many things in there that are sort of ugly, but no. Anybody? And Matt doesn't get to answer because he was Go also back. at the gig. What? Go back. All right. I mean, things that you wouldn't think that the CPU would be spending all of its time doing. Query cache it might be doing because it might actually be writing lots of blocks to the query cache, and that'd be a normal thing to do on a server. Oh, mm, closer. I'll put you out of your misery. So it's doing a lot of int to string conversion and long to string conversion and decimal to string conversion. What it turned out was this is a PHP shop and they were quoting all of their ints and all of their SQL strings. Um, and so the CPU is spending, well, in this case, it's not, a, uh, this sample is not a huge amount of time, but it's actually spending two, four, five, almost five to six percent of the CPU time translating strings into int, or translating strings into, into integers. Take out the quotes from the, from the thing that you're sending to the server, and, and it's going to have a little bit more headroom to do what it's doing. This is a really micro thing here, but they were they were on the edge of, of what they were doing. Unfortunately, I don't have a before and after to show you in this case because then their answer was, oh, yeah, we're doing that. Is that that has a performance impact? We'll go change that in our code, and then we left. So, um, but um, to not cheat you out of uh, out of out of anything, we have uh, so here's here's what you know what they were doing, and uh, and it does turn out that that magic is not free. Um, so, slightly harder example, and I've actually got results of fixing it this time. Ha 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 ha. It's just, you know, faking you out the first time. Um, so here's, here's a problem, was, and this was actually on, on, a, on a server that was actually quite problematic, and if any of you read my blog, you will have actually already seen this example. Um,